Welcome to the next level with Pastor John Chamnus, where we take you to the next level through revelation from the Word of God and the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Get ready to go to the next level now. With your word for today, here's Pastor John. You know, I've been seeking God, and uh, I'm, I know that you may not know this, but I know that Patricia is is like this, and I am a lot like this. Is that we are? I would say a good word for it is we are pushers. <laughs> we we like to push things uh, as far as they can be pushed, and. Um, you know, that's, I believe, just part of the call that God has on our lives. But uh, what I mean is in a good way, because, you know, we want to we want to push, not necessarily push people, but we want to lead people into the presence of God. We want to lead people into a greater truth. Uh, in the Word of God, we want to lead people into their destinies. We want to lead people into everything that God has for them. We want to lead people into healing. We want to lead people into uh, being set free from whatever has them that's not of God. We want to lead them into liberty in the presence of Jesus. Amen. We want to lead people, but we want to push. Like so, in the spirit, uh, I've been pushing a lot. <laughs> Woo. <laughs> Sorry, I've been pushing a lot in the spirit, and uh, I, I didn't anticipate this happening. But uh, been pushing in the spirit, and I've been, as I shared, I think the last week or so, uh, I've been just praying and asking God for some really big things, and I've been um, asking God at the same time to change me. And this is this is something that. I mean, it's <laughs> it's uncomfortable when you ask God to change you and you really mean it in your heart. And, and I mean it and I'm going through some stuff with God that, you know, God is I know he, it feels like sometimes not all the time. Thankfully, uh, sometimes it feels like he is just ripping the insides out. <laughs> and at the same time, I'm smart enough to realize that. Uh, even though it feels that way, that the result is going to be something tremendous. And so I haven't relented. And if you look in Isaiah chapter 62, uh, you'll see that verse. Pastor Jim and I, we've had this conver conversation about crying in front of people. <laughs> we don't, neither one of us like to do that. And uh, I, I actually had a word from the Lord in a service on Wednesday night, probably a couple months ago. And and uh, the Lord said, "Hey, don't, don't, uh, don't be trying to hold back your tears because there's there's cleansing in your tears. You don't know when you really <laughs> when you when you release your tears, you don't know what it's going to do in the hearts and in the lives of some other people other than you. And uh, I think you know that it's a, it's a disservice at times when we feel that God is touching us and it's beginning to move us emotionally that we we quench that." <laughs> Amen. It just kind of makes it hard to talk at the same time when you're bawling like a baby. <laughs> Amen. But uh, in Isaiah chapter 62, oops, Isaiah chapter 62, um, let's look at that really quick. I, I don't have any notes. I have some scriptures that I highlighted for today. And when I was praying this morning, uh, there's some things going on that I, I, I want to announce to you guys at some point, but I, I'm sorry. It sounds like I'm, I'm being so choppy and segmented that it's, it's hard for you all to follow what I'm saying. I apologize for that. Um, who took Isaiah out of my Bible? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Oh, there it is. All right. I, I know where Isaiah is. <laughs> but in Isaiah 62, let me just read a few verses out of that, that chapter. Chapter uh, 62, beginning with verse 1 there, 
it says, for Zion's sake, I will not keep silent. And I'm asking God for stuff that's beyond me. I mean, I can't, I can't make it happen. Um, and as a pastor, as a, as a minister in this region, I can, there's things I can't make happen. I can remodel a building over a long period of time. <laughs> I, I can do certain things, you know, like that, but I can't, I can't make people uh, come here. I can't make people be free. I can't make people seek God. I can't make people um, receive everything God has for them. I have to have divine help with those things. You know, even some of the remodeling, I have to have some divine help for some, <laughs> some of that as well. But um, this says here, for Zion's sake, but I'm asking God for some big things. For Zion's sake, I will not keep silent. Uh, and so, I mean, I'm, I've been relentless, even though at times, like I mentioned earlier, it's felt like, you know, my insides are being ripped out. I know it's going to produce something uh, phenomenal. It's going to produce something tremendous. And one of the things that I've, I've mentioned in the past week or two is that, you know, a lot of times we'll pray when we pray and we ask God, you know, to, to minister to our family, to bless our families, or we ask God to bless us on our jobs. We ask God to protect us. We, you know, we ask God for a lot of things. And a lot of things that we talk to God about are, are relative to just things that, that would benefit us or benefit people that we know and love. Um, but I think that a key ingredient that we have missed out on is the simple thing of asking God to change me because I've recognized that uh, if I'm not currently manifesting everything that God has for me, then there is a strong possibility that I can't manifest it how I am right now. I have to move into, <laughs> and this is going to sound so familiar with probably almost every message that we've preached in the past year. By the way, I before I, I made a, a huge mistake like what Patricia was talking about, I made it a whole year. I'm like, wow, that was, I was just thinking about that. I'm like, wow, I made it a whole year. That's pretty amazing. <laughs> I would have thought I would have made mistakes like that right off the bat. But uh, I mean, not that I didn't make mistakes, but amen. That was unimportant. Amen. But um, it's important for us to change. Because I feel that if we could have manifested everything God had for us the way that we are right now, we'd have a lot more of what God promised us in possession, in manifestation. Amen. And there's verses like in, um, I think it's Galatians chapter 3, that talks about when we look into this word, when we look into this uh, this word talking about the word like a, a glass or a mirror, like a mirror. And, it, and that verse goes on to say that we are changed. If we're changed, then it's obvious, should be obvious, that we cannot remain the same as we were if we are undergoing a change. Amen. And so I love what it says. It says we are changed into the same image. And so what I'm getting at this morning, I'm going to read a couple of verses here. What I'm getting at though, is that in order to receive what God has for us, in order to manifest the glory of God, that, that verse in Galatians mentions the word glory. And I think glory is a lot of things. I think glory is gold dust falling out of the ceiling. I think glory is uh, healings and miracles and manifestation. I think glory is uh, the cloud rolling into the sanctuary, into the house of God and, uh, you know, uh, setting people free. And, and I mean, all kinds of supernatural things happen. So the glory describes a whole bunch of different stuff. But uh, it, it says there that when we behold his face as in a glass or in a mirror, we are changed into the same image from glory to glory. And so uh, I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know about you. I do know about you. I know about you. I know that you want to please God. I know that you want to uh, receive from God. I know that you want to, to uh, 
uh, have everything that the word of God promises you. So in order to do that, we've got to sit down and say, God, listen to me. I'm, I'm done asking you just for stuff. I'm, I'm not saying that I'm anti-prosperity. I am not. I'm telling you this is the way to it is to sit down and ask God, God, listen, I want you to change me so that I can be the person who can receive what you have promised. Hallelujah. And I think, you know, I've mentioned this before. I think we've got tithing down. I think we've got sowing down. I think we've got partnership down. I think we've got all these things down. But, you know, there's there's a lot more that God says to do than to just tithe and to give and to sow. Those things are awesome. They're wonderful. They'll get you to a certain point. But right now in the spirit, in this day, in this age, in this season, that is such a prophetic season going on right now. That what God is saying to everybody, listen, if you'll get on board, then just ask me to change you. Just ask me to change you. Don't ask me to change her. Don't ask me to change him. And I started doing that. See, I, I pray for my wife every day as well. And one of the things I pray for her is God. And I was actually doing this. I was saying, because I thought it was, I thought it was really honorable. I was saying, God, show us how to love each other in a way that we can both receive it from one another. And after a couple of weeks, I was doing that. God really jerked my chain and he said, hey, why would you even want to ask me that she would love you in a way that you could receive it? Shouldn't your focus be just loving her the way that she can receive it wouldn't that answer everything i'm like yes god <laughs> yes it would yes i don't want to be selfish in my in my seeking god in my relationship with my wife i i want to i my responsibility in our marriage is to love her the way that she can receive it my my responsibility the call of god on my life in our marriage is for me to love her and to treat her the way that she can receive and know that i love her without any shadow of a doubt and when that happens oh god will make sure that she loves me in a way that i can receive it but i don't have to focus on that i have to focus on changing me so i I shortened my prayer. <laughs> my prayer got shorter. So I'm like, God, just change me. Just show me how to love her in a way that she can receive it. God, just change me. Every time I pray for this church, every time I pray for you as, as a congregation, as members of this body, every time I pray for this region, I always add on to it, God, change me. Change me so that I can receive these things that I'm asking you for change me and it feels like your insides are being ripped out sometimes <laughs> but even at that i'm smart enough to know i'm not done even though it's disruptive to to who i feel like i am i'm smart enough to know i'm not done i'm not stopping i'm not going to stop asking god to change me because i want it all I want everything. And so he says, for Zion's sake, I will not keep silent. That's me. And for Jerusalem's sake, I will not keep quiet until her righteousness. And so I've actually I've read through this chapter and God revealed some things out of this chapter. And he said he pulls out Jerusalem and, and Judea and these areas that are uh, obviously they're known to the, the Middle East um, part of the world. But. We swapped out these words and we've put in Eastern Kentucky. We've put in Beattyville. We've put in Lee County and Owsley County and Wolf County and Powell County. We've put in Eastern Kentucky. And years ago, I know that um, it, was, it was mentioned by Reinhard Bonnke. He's in heaven now, but it was mentioned that um, he did a lot of meetings. He did a lot of revivals. He had a lot of tent meetings. He had a lot of ministry on the continent of Africa. And Oh, wow. The vision that God showed him was a blood washed Africa. And based on that vision, he, huh? 
<laughs> Did y'all hear her say something? I heard somebody say something. Somebody say something. And the vision that I have seen is a blood washed Eastern Kentucky. And I'll be honest with you, it's bigger than me. Um, but this goes on. Verse four, it says, it, it will no longer be said to you. Now, this is what I see God saying for this area. It will no longer be said to you forsaken, nor to your land will it any longer be said desolate. But you will be called my delight is in her. And your land married for the Lord delights in you and to him your land will be married. Verse seven says and give him this is the verse really that he gave me first out of this chapter, verse seven, and give him no rest until he establishes and makes Jerusalem a praise in the earth. And so again, we're swapping out that word Jerusalem and we're putting Eastern Kentucky, we're putting uh, Beattyville, we're putting Lee County, we're putting Alzey County, we're putting uh, Wolf County, we're putting uh, Powell County, we're putting all these counties in, in Eastern Kentucky under that word and I'll be honest with you I can't share it with you today but God has shown me some things that we are already working on doing that are way beyond me that when <laughs> when God showed this to me it was um, I think probably Monday of this week after last Sunday uh, when I and I, I can't say I heard, I mean, how God speaks to me. Usually it's just, it's just he causes me to know things. But when he caused me to know that, um, I'm like, that sounds crazy. But haven't we just preached about that? When God asks you to do some something, many times it will sound crazy. Right? So... I hope by next week I can have it all together and, and be able to share it with you guys. But uh, I, I just don't want to, I don't feel like I'm able to share it just yet. Amen. But it's really good. It's good. Uh, when I read this, verse 7, it says, I will give him no rest. I thought, well, you know, I'm, I'm already, I'm already praying. I'm already studying. So I'm like, God, this is this is how I think. I'm like, God, so okay, if you want me to pray hours, if you want to pray, want me to pray two hours a day, whatever it is, you let me know. I'm I'm willing to do it. You said give him no rest. Give him no rest until he accomplishes this. And so what I what I received from the Lord this past week uh, just blows away me praying two hours a day. It's it's beyond me. But uh, at the same time, I mean, I have found that I am waking up and uh, investing my life into this area, into this region in intercession and prayer and supplication, uh, if, if that makes sense, amen. But uh, it's, it's gonna get a lot bigger, amen. So look around and relish this where we are right now. If, if you enjoy just feeling like, oh, we know everybody. <laughs> we know everybody and uh, you know, it doesn't take long to greet everybody and we're comfortable with it like this. Uh, look around and relish it because it's not gonna stay that way. Amen. I know what it's gonna take is uh, a massive move of prayer and of removing barriers that have existed for decades. And uh, so that's beyond me, but God has given us a plan. Amen. Amen. So I just want to share that. And uh, 
Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, not keep you any much longer. Amen. <laughs> so, uh, I think probably next week um, we will get in and uh, I have some scriptures highlighted in the book of Judges to talk about uh, Gideon next week and look at some specific things that um, God is really opening up. So, I hope by next week we can do that. Amen. So, let's all stand on our feet. Uh, Patricia, you have anything else to say? Okay. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus, just stretch your hands toward heaven right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, you know that prophecy that, that Dr. Barkley spoke over, that word he spoke over us and over me in particular, I received it. I, I have not been feeling attractive. <laughs> but I've, start, I've, I've put that into my confession. I'm attractive. God's making me attractive. <laughs> he doesn't have to do that for her. He has to do that for me. <laughs> but uh, what? Attractive to people. Yes, that's not what he's talking about. That's not what he's talking about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. But uh, that thing about the presence of God, uh, man, I really expected a different praise and worship experience. I mean, I think it was it was good this morning, but I mean, every time I sit down and begin to worship God, and, I mean, I'm expecting which I mean, it, His His presence is all over this place right now um, but I love it I, I can't get enough of it amen but uh, hallelujah I just want to I want to speak over you guys in the name of Jesus so hallelujah thank you Jesus I give you praise God I give you praise so what I feel right now in my spirit is let me see if I can get some praise team <laughs> we'll get the praise team back up here amen uh, you guys just play something softly <laughs> oh my goodness yeah Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. So what, what I felt in my spirit that I believe God was showing me this morning, even when I was praying this morning at home, is that one thing that God wanted to do is God wanted to reestablish some connection. He wanted to, to reestablish some strong connection in his people. And so I feel like right now is the time, that moment right now, and it doesn't have to take a long time. I'm going to let you go here in just a moment. But, and this is not an altar call, but if you've struggled in your relationship with God, God is moving in such a way right now that he wants to reestablish a strong connection with you. Or you might say, well, I've never had a strong connection with God. I never felt like I really had a strong connection with God. Then God wants to establish a strong connection with you right now today. We are in a season. We are in a time. We're moving into some things um, prophetically across the nation and across the world that Jesus is going to be coming back soon. If any time in history that this was important, it's never been more important than it is right now for you to have an intimate and strong connection with God. And so I just ask you, God, if that's you, that you've struggled with that at all in any way, that I just, I'm not going to ask you to lift your hand. Lift both hands in the name of Jesus. And I, I'm just believing that God is going to touch you. I'm not going to touch you. I'm not going to reach out to you. I'm not going to. 
uh, lay hands on you or anything like that, but I want you to reach out and, and just touch God and let God touch you and say, I'm establishing. God saying, I'm establishing that connection with you that you wanted, that connection that you've longed for. Hallelujah. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God, for making it happen. Thank you, God, for making it happen. In Jesus' name. Thank you for making it happen, God. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. For some of you, and I, I know for, I'm not going to say your name on camera, but for you, what I hear God say is that He's going to take you through a short time of really diving in deep, uh, personal introspection, of getting quiet, of getting in His presence, of just uh, like a, I mean, what the world would call a soul searching season, that God is going to take you into something deep deep it's going to be a deep thing that he's going to do in your spirit that's that's going to take you to a, a different level I, I hate to speak generally like that but i believe that god is going to begin to reveal some things to you not just revelation from uh, just out of the word by itself but revelation from his spirit through an intimate contact and a, an intimate fellowship with him that he's going to take you i know you you've had that i know you have that but he's going to take it deeper than it's ever been before and so be be expecting that and take the steps to step into that kind of a setting and meet with god where he can do that amen hallelujah and i'm not going to say your name either but i see you and that you have you have taken the sword of the spirit you've taken the word before and you've you've used it but <laughs> I, I just what I saw is that God is going to cause you to be skillful with the sword that you're going to be an expert with the sword of the spirit and not that you haven't spoken it before not that you haven't used your mouth not that you haven't had the sword of God in your mouth you have I know I've heard you do it but um he says, I'm going to make you skillful. I'm going to make you like one of David's mighty men that had the sword, that carried the sword in his hand and it claimed to his hand. It actually became one with him. He couldn't let it go even if he tried. And he slayed enemies left and right and left and right, one on top of another, until he was written in the, the holy word of God as one of the mighty men of David. God says, I'm going to train you and I'm going to teach you how to become skillful in overcoming everything that comes your way and to not let anything get the best of you because that's what his weapons of warfare are designed to do, to cause you to overcome everything, to cause you to overcome every circumstance, every attack, every weapon that the enemy has formed against you and none of them prosper ever again. As you become skillful. Hallelujah. And I, just lastly, I want to speak this over the men. I didn't see any two particular men. <laughs> that sounds funny. I didn't see any two particular men, but I saw two men this morning as I was praying. And I saw two men walking up a big hill. And one was on the, the higher side of the hill. One was on the little bit of the, you know, the down slope. It was on a little bit lower. And the one that was a little bit lower started to slip a little bit. I don't know, maybe he was wearing dress shoes. <laughs> but started to slip a little bit down the hill. And the one that was on the higher up end of the hill had a hold of the other guy's arm. They were walking together. He had a hold of his arm. And he's like, you know what? I'm not going to let you fall. I'm not going to let you slip. I'm not going to let you fall. You're going to make it. You're going to be okay. And so I speak that over our men. You guys are strongest when you stand together. You are strongest when you 
are not just in it for yourself. You're in your you're strongest when you're in it together to, to hold one another up, to lift one another up, to encourage each other. And so I speak that unity over you guys in the name of Jesus. We need that in the body of Christ. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. I give you praise, Lord. I thank you, Jesus. And Charlene, I don't know if you're still watching or not, but I, I just, what I hear for you is that, that you just love everything to be right. You want everything to be right. You want everything to be in its place. You want it to be proper. You want it to be as it should be. And so <laughs> that is something that God has put inside you. He, 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 I'm pretty sure you probably have been criticized for that in the past by some people. But God says this is something that he has put within you. You have, a, you, you have an anointing for making things right. You have an anointing for seeing what needs to be done and what corrections need to be made. And God is God's doing a work in you right now. I don't know. If you're still watching, just lift your hands to the Lord if you can right now. And God's doing a work in you, in your heart, and in your mind. God is touching you right now. And God's going to take you to a new place. He's going to take you to a new dimension, a new level. And I see authority. I, I see the word authority. God is going to release a level of authority to you that you have not experienced in the past because you know what's right, you want it to be right, and he's given you the, the authority to make it right. Amen. So with that, I, I would say rise up into the position of leadership that God has called you to be in. Amen. Thank you, God. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you for joining us today on The Next Level. We invite you to visit us for one of our live services, Sundays at 10 a.m. at Grace Fellowship. We're located at 1925 Highway 11 South in Badeville. You can also visit us on the web at www.graceofbadeville.org. We look forward to seeing you again soon at The Next Level.